I appreciate both of them specials. Uh, turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. You know, God works in funny ways, you know. Uh, whenever we were planning on having guest speaker, you know, I kind of got excited to get preached to, excited to, you know, just have, be able to sit in the pew and, and, and hear a message from God for the first time from the preacher's mouth and, and listen to the words that, that God would have for me today. But then, whenever I found out that, you know, I wasn't going to be able, he wasn't going to be able to make it and uh, that, that, you know, I couldn't get anyone else and I was going to preach, then... I got excited to preach. And so uh, the Lord works in, in, in funny ways. You know, just as excited as I was to be able to listen to preaching, I'm excited to preach this morning. Lord, give me a message, and so I want to share it with you. But Philippians chapter 2 is where we're going to be at. And we're having another installment of, of, of the church series that we've been going through. And this one is called Unity in the Church. Unity in the Church. You know, we've had... A few, uh, a few that we've looked at so far. We've had peace uh, in the church, love in the church, uh, that the church ought to be a Bible-believing church. And then last week, uh, I would ask, but I don't want my feelings hurt, so I'm just going to tell you what it was. Uh, the church that is purchased and the church is precious is what we talked about last week. And so this week, we're going to be looking at unity in the church. And I told you, and I'll tell you again this week, just so that we can always be reminded uh, that uh, there's, a, there's a purpose for, for us going through these things. The purpose is that we apply them to our life. You know, we, and why, why do we have to apply them to our life? Well, because as we've discussed and as we'll probably say every time, we are the church. The church is not this building. This church is not the preacher. This church is not the pews. This church is not the deacons. This church is God's people. It's a called out assembly of like-minded believers that have been saved and baptized through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so we need to apply these to our lives. We're going to talk about three different things this morning. We're going to be concerning unity. First is how important it is. That's what we're going to look at. Second is how it happens and third is why we should do it. So read with me in the book of Philippians chapter 2 in verse 1. <laughs> there we again. And it says, the Apostle Paul is writing and he said, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man <coughs> on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let's go to the Lord in a word prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts that we're able to come and be in the presence of your uh, Spirit, Lord, and that we be uh, filled with the Spirit this morning, Lord. I just pray that each and every person that's here would be uh, submissive to the Holy Spirit of God, whatever it is that, that, that each person is being led of today. If there be someone here who needs to to get saved, Lord, needs to come to know your precious Son. I pray that that would be done today. If there be someone here who needs to make a commitment to church membership or a commitment to baptism or just a commitment back to you, Lord, whatever the case may be, I pray that we would do that today, wherever you're leading us. We know that you, teach, you, you lead each and every one of us in, in different ways every uh, time that we step foot here, Lord. We ought to leave different than when we came in, and I pray that that be the case today. I ask that you would just be with us and go with us, that I would be used as a puppet, I would decrease and you would increase. Your word would be proclaimed here in this place. I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh, verses 1 and 2 again. You know, in this passage of Scripture, I'm going to tell you, the book of Philippians has a lot of things 
that we as Christians ought to, to, to heed the, the, the teachings of. And you know, there was a church here that this was written to. Uh, and, and does anybody know what the name of it was? Philippi. Philippi. Philippi, the Philippian church, you know, we've, we've got a lot of uh, teachings that, that, that Paul was teaching here to this church and that, that concerns us as well today. You know, what's, what's incredible is we have, uh, what is it? We have uh, the, the books of Corinthians. They were written to a church. Uh, you have the book of Ephesians was written to a church. The book of Galatians was written to a church. The, the book of Philippians was written to a church. And then we have churches in Revelation that are being written to. Do you think that, 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 that God thinks it important that how the church ought to be, uh, be in his word and that we ought to study it and learn it ourselves? I think it is. So our first point this morning is how important it is that unity be in the church. Let's just read the language in which this is written here. And Paul, he says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, Having the, same, uh, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let me read it to you here in uh, maybe, maybe country folk. Uh, how, 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 how we would say this. Say, if there's any encouragement in Christ. Should we have encouragement in Christ today? Uh, we ought to encourage one another in Christ. Says, if there be any encouragement in Christ. If there be any comfort provided by love. Hey, I'm going to tell you, whether it's the love of Christ, whether it's the love of your mama, whether it's the love of a spouse or a friend, love brings comfort, does it not? Uh, I, I, I'll tell you, uh, my, my, my daughter had her tonsils out Monday, and uh, give it, love it on her, it, it brought her comfort, whether it was mama or whether it was daddy. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll tell you real quick, just to share with you. I cried the whole time she was back here getting her surgery. And it's not because she was having surgery. It, it was because this broke my heart. And you know, it made me think just the other day, uh, you know, that, that uh, this is how we ought to treat our Father in heaven. Uh, but, but anyway, we, whenever we were back there and she was getting ready to, to go to surgery, I thought they were going to put her under. Well, they didn't put her under while we were back there. So they had to wheel her away while we, while she was still waiting. And, uh, J.C. started out the door while well, I didn't want to leave. And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of standing there and they're fixing to go through a door they won't let us go through. And she turns around and she screams out for me and reaches. And I had to, I couldn't go get it. And if I talk about it very much, I'll cry again. But, uh, you know, uh, she wanted some love, some comfort. You know, that's what we ought to do whenever uh, we're going through something we're a little scared of. We ought to reach out for the Father. And guess what? He won't be like me. He'll come get you. But anyway, uh, let's go Let's go on. But, 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 but love brings forth comfort. If there be any comfort provided by love, if any fellowship in the Spirit, any affection or mercy, you know, that, 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 that bowels. That's talking about, you know, deep affection. You know, like you can feel it in your bowels. You know, today we kind of say, you know, I love you with all my heart, right? Uh, that means, boy, I love you. I, I love you there. I couldn't love you anymore if I tried. I love you with my whole heart. You know, this is kind of not saying here, you know, that there'd be bowels. You know, you can feel it in your in your, in your bowels. Um, you may want to go get that checked if you feel it in your bowels when you, when you love somebody, right? But uh, uh, anyway, uh, if any affection or mercy, you know, and it says if, any, if there be any bowels and mercies. Basically, uh, I have a saying that, that I use, and it is not my saying. It's somebody, you know, but... Uh, for, for the love of all things good and holy, right? Uh, you know, something, something's going on, and, and uh, say the kids, the kids, they just, they got me stretched out, and they keep crying, and they just, there's one thing after the next, and something. I'll say, for the love of all things good and holy, you know? That's what, that's what Paul's writing here. It's like, if there be, for all things that are good and holy, fulfill me my joy, or complete my joy. What is the joy, it is that you be like-minded, of the same mind. Not only that, but that you have the same love. And not only that, but that you be of one accord or that you be of one spirit. 
one like-minded spirit, and of one mind, or having one purpose. Folks, how important is it, do you think, when you read in the context of the language in which it was written, do you think it is that the church be of one mind? I think it's super important. Uh, I'll tell you why. And, and we'll go, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit in our next point, but folks, uh, we're all different people, are we not? We all come from different backgrounds. Now, some of us, you know, uh, and I think this is the way a church ought to be. A lot of us come from similar backgrounds, right? You know, most of us here were raised out in the woods somewhere, you know, uh, you know, that, this, that we, uh, we, we, you know, whenever I moved to Little Rock from, from Palmyra, Arkansas, it was different, okay? Uh, but most of us here, raised out, out in rural Arkansas, you know, we, we, we uh, come from uh, humble places, you know, we uh, maybe uh, know how to work hard or used to working hard. We come from similar back, but at the end of the day, we're all different people, aren't we? Uh, you have different opinions that, uh, that I do. You have different likes and dislikes. Uh, than I do, you know, and so we're all different people. So how in the world, how in the world is God going to allow us to all come together and be of one mind, one accord, be united in uh, our love for Christ? Well, that's our next point. But I wanted you, first of all, to get through how important it is. Can you see how important it is? It's just the way that Paul's writing here. It's so important. He said if there be any love in Christ, any encouragement, any love, any mercy, if you care at all about each other. So we see how important it is today. But secondly, we see how it happens. Oh, this is good. Now, this is hard. Not easy, just like most things with Christ. But listen to this, verses 3 and 4. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man to his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now listen here, folks. How many of you think your ideas are always the best? I do. Nobody else wants to be honest? I think my ideas are usually always best. Brother Will said he does too. Usually, my idea is the right way. And anybody else that thinks it's, the, it, it's different, well, you're just wrong, right? Uh, if it was my idea, then it has to be the right way, right? I'm smarter than most folks. That's how we think. Folks, I'm going to tell you what happens whenever a church is not in unity with one another. It don't stay a church for very long. You just get simple about it. Uh, what ends up happening is uh, my brother Will here, he thinks his ideas are always <coughs> right. And I think my ideas are always right. And so I go around to Brother Van and I say, you know, this is my idea. And this is what Brother Will's idea was. And that's just that's just dumb. My idea is the smart one. And then Brother Will, he goes to Brother Jim there, and he says, listen, this is my idea, and Brother Cody's idea was just dumb. That's just stupid. Why in the world would he think that that's the right way? And we just go, and so guess what happens? Brother Van, he says, well, you know what? Brother Cody did have a pretty good idea. And Brother Will's idea was pretty dumb. And Brother Jim thinks that my idea was pretty dumb, and Brother Will's idea was pretty smart. And folks, eventually, uh, the church ceases to exist in the way that God intended it to. What ends up happening, what happens so often, we hear of it so often, is the church will split, maybe even right down the middle. Folks, I'm going to tell you, it's sad when that happens. It is sad. It breaks my heart when that happens. Uh, it breaks my heart. And you say, well, well, and, and not even just a split. Okay, a split is sad, but when someone leaves one of God's churches because of, of, of one reason or another, because of something that happened. Uh, there was not unity in the church. It breaks my heart. But how unity takes place. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. You know what that means? What that means is, if we're having a business meeting here, and uh, 
You know, there, there, there's some, there's some, you know, we, we, we're talking about something. Are we always going to agree? No, we're not. And we need to accept, if we try, if we say that we all, like, all, always have to agree, we'll never get nothing done. But, uh, We've got a little chit chat back and forth. Maybe, maybe it's getting a little, you know. Uh, maybe Brother Will hadn't told me my idea is completely stupid out loud, but he's he's starting to hint at it, and I maybe I'm starting to hint that his idea is nearly as smart. You know what we ought to do right then? Right. Oh, shut it down. That's right. We ought to go to go to the Lord in a word of prayer together. We ought to refocus ourselves on why we do. What we do. Amen. Verse 3 here says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. I can tell you what that means to me. It means if there's strife going on, if there's, if there's, oh, uh, we want to do this for a, for a reason, maybe to say, look at me, or, or somebody saying, well, I'll do something, you know, so that they maybe feel like they uh, want to show off or whatever, we ought to put an end to it. We ought to stop. We ought to go forward and one mind of unity. As I mentioned, we're not always going to agree with one another. But I'm going to tell you. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Now, maybe I told you a story, and I won't tell you who did it, but when we were at Bethlehem, uh, uh, when I was growing up, they voted to build a new building. Remember when they did that? And you might have had, had it here when y'all built this new building. I wasn't here. It was close to about the same time whenever, whenever both the churches there were doing that. But there was a fellow... There was a few fellows, but there was a fellow in particular that I think got my mind on. He was against building a new church. Against it. Didn't like the idea of it. Didn't want to do nothing. Didn't want to have nothing to do with it. It was a bad idea to him. And guess what? He's entitled to that, is he not? Mm -hmm. you know, he's entitled to feel that way. You know, he, he felt that way and he thought it was wrong. He thought we ought, you know, we ought not do it. We're going to bite off more than we can chew. It's not, it's not, we ought to just stay here. And uh, when it came down to it, you know, this was months, and I'm sure maybe when y'all built this building here, and some of you remember when this building here was built, maybe you talked about it for a couple of months. You know, you prayed about it for a couple of months. And so this discussion has been going on, and, and, and it's been going on and on and on. And, you know, every time it's been brought up, this, this particular fellow, he's let it be known that he doesn't think it's a good idea. He's against it. It comes down to the very, the, the, the very final vote. We're voting on whether or not we're going to do this. And uh, we were going to do it by a standing vote. And um, they asked the people who were against it to stand up and vote. And of course this fellow, he stood up and he voted. And, and uh, maybe, maybe uh, you know, maybe 10 people stood up. I don't think it was even that much, but maybe. And uh, they sat back down and they said, and all for it. And of course, you know, the, the rest of the people stood up and uh, it was overwhelming majority. And Brother John, he's trying to do due diligence like he's going to sit there and count like he can't see that it's well overwhelming majority. <laughs> but this fellow did something that I think we all ought to, to uh, think of and we all ought to take to heart if something ever happens to where we're just against it. He did what the Bible tells us to do. He didn't do what he wanted to do. He did what the Bible tells us to do. And he interrupted Brother John in the middle of his count. And he said, Brother John, can I uh, ask something? And he said, yes. And I can only imagine, now that I'm a pastor, uh, I imagine Brother John Marler probably thought, oh, Lord, what's fixing to happen here? Uh, and he said, would it be all right with everybody if I changed my vote because I can tell that this is what the majority of the church wants? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what, that took humility. Mm -hmm. That took getting self out of the way. Oh. That took uh, only the Lord helped him go and do that. Listen, folks, it is hard when we think we're right to, 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 to give up on it, right? But I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> We ought to have them. And I, I've never looked at that man the same. I've always mm -hmm. had way more respect for him after that. And, uh, <coughs> you know, we, we as a church are not always going to agree. But we always ought to come away with what does the Lord want for the church. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. We ought to pray. Well, we ought to pray. Uh, and ask that the Lord be uh, give us all one mind. Right? Pray. Don't, don't mean, if, if you know something's going to happen... If business means be prayed up for it. And be prayed up for it anyway if you don't know what's coming. 
We all ought to be prayed up and ask the Lord, but how it happens, nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Boy, that's hard. It's hard to get self out of the way. As I mentioned in that story, that fellow got self out of the way. And maybe he even upset some people who, who you know, maybe thought that way, the same way that he did. You know, we, 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 we wear our hearts on our, and our emotions and our feelings on our sleeves, you know, uh, just as people. Some more than others. Uh, some wear long sleeves, you know, but some of them, some of us, we put them right there. And uh, some people, when, when, if someone disagrees with us, you know, that hurts our feelings. If just, they just disagree with us, you know. Uh, my wife, she gets her feelings hurt if I disagree with her. Uh, you know, that's just the way she is. And if somebody disagrees with me, I let them go on and, you know, be dumb. They can, they can disagree with me. They can be wrong. No, I'm kidding. But seriously, you know, uh, uh, but, but, but at the end of the day, we ought to not try and hurt each other's feelings. Mm -hmm. Have a lowliness of, 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 have a mind of lowliness. Lowliness of mind and esteem one another. You know, when somebody has a different idea than you and somebody thinks we ought to handle a situation different and they let it be known, why don't we think about it? Why don't we pray about it? Why don't we say, well, you know what? That may be a good idea. Let me, let me, let me do pros and cons on that. But what do we tend to do more than anything? We tend to say, well, it ain't my idea, so it ain't good. Right? A lowliness of mind, esteeming each, each esteeming others better than we esteem ourselves. Look not every man at his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You want me to tell you the, the I've used ugly words today like dumb and stupid, but I'm going to use it again. Uh, you know a dumb thing I heard when I church split, and I'm being 100% honest with you, and I'm not making this up. Uh, does anybody here, and we may not have done it around this part of the world, I don't know. Does anybody here remember maybe um, uh, in days of old, whenever the church had uh, uh, colored toilet paper in the women's bathroom? Does anybody remember that? I got one head shaking, yes, two head shaking, yes. You remember that? Uh, the, the, the women would have colored toilet paper, you know. Uh, don't know why, but uh, anyway, had colored toilet paper. A church split after they remodeled the church, the, the bathrooms. But they, they got through the whole remodeling process, did the bathrooms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, they split over the color of toilet paper you used in the woman's bathroom. Now that's sad, is it not? But guess what? What happened? Somebody thought pink was better and somebody thought, you know, probably not, I don't know, uh, what colors, you know, it don't matter. I mean, somebody thought blue was better. But folks, you know, that's a silly illustration, but guess what? Anything you put right there for a church to split is silly. It's silly. If we put it in between our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to where we are so mad at them, to where we can't worship with them anymore, to where we, 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 have, we have split God's bride, it's silly. And should be not. We ought to have a lowliness of mind. You say, well, they're not going to give in. Okay, well then you give in. Look not every man at his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You know, what, what's, what's the, what we call it the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Anybody here know it? <laughs> treat others as you would want to be treated. We kind of talked about it in Sunday school this morning about how we ought to treat others. But well, would you want people to hear you out if you if you have something that you think might help in a situation? Do you want people if you have an idea? Do you want people to at least listen to it? Do you, do you do you if some even if you are wrong and it's not very smart, do you want people to be still nice to you and not just this you know? Brush you off? Yeah. We ought to care for one another. How does unity take place in the church? The simplest way that I can tell it. The, the, if, you know, I try, to, I try to take things 
questions that I ask, because I ask a lot of questions, you know this, and I try to answer them in one sentence. You know, I preach about it, but I try to answer it in one sentence. And if I could answer, how does unity take place in the church? In one sentence, it would be to get self out of the way. Why does church just split? Because so-and-so didn't get self out of the way, and neither did other so-and-so, and they fought at one another until they got a, a good amount of people on both sides, and they went to war. Who's going to keep this church, and who's going to go somewhere else? Folks, that ought not take place in the Lord's house. That ought not take place between the Lord's people. But I'm going to tell you, it happens all the time. All the time. But how does unity happen? Get self out of the way and pray. <coughs> Get self out of the way and pray. Lastly, this morning, <coughs> why should we do it? I ask this question often in my sermons. Why should we do blank? Whatever it is that we're talking about. Why should we do it? And, and I always say, well, the, the, the main answer is the Lord told us to. And that ought to be good enough. You know, when I was growing up, if my mom and dad, I asked them why. They tell me to do something. I say, why? I say, because I told you so, right? It should be good enough. Good enough answer. But more so than that, why should we do what God told us to do? Well, the Bible tells us here in Philippians chapter 2. But let's look at verse 5. This tells us, you know, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who are we? Supposed to model our life after Christ. Who are we supposed to try and follow the footsteps of Christ? When that word Christian gets thrown out, do you know, I think I've told you a hundred times at least, but let me make it 101. Do you know whenever in the first century, whenever they started getting called Christians, do you know what they were saying? They were saying you are Christ-like. How it's changed today. A lot of people call themselves Christians, folks, that oh, they're nowhere near Christ's life. Nowhere near. I fall into that quite a bit too. But, but we ought to do this not only because God told us, not only because His Word tells us that this is how we ought to be, not only because it will save the church, not only because... Uh, uh, we, we, you know, if you want to show love to one another, not be ugly to one another, be a loving, giving, caring church, unified church. I'm going to tell you, uh, the only way a church can be strong is if it's unified. That's it. But more so than that, on top of all of that, it is so that we can be like Christ. I did a sermon series here, oh, it's probably been two or three years ago now. The, the, uh, we had five, I think it was five sermons, and it was to be like Christ. I don't know if anybody remembers them, but we looked at to be like, the, to have the mind of Christ, to, to have the, 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 the love of Christ, and, and, and different things like that. Folks, that's what we ought to strive every day to be, is to be like Christ. What did Jesus Christ do while he was here on earth? Everything the Father said. No more and no less. And so whenever we look at the life of Christ, that's who we ought to model our life after. And it's we're being told right here, you know, you, sometimes you say, I just wish I knew what to do. Right? <laughs> I just wish God would tell me. Well, he says here, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if there be any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. He tells us how important it is. Not only does he tell us how important it is, he goes on verse 3, he says, Let nothing be, do, be done through <coughs> strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So he tells us how important it is. And he tells us how to do it. And he says, let 
this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And then he tells us why we ought to. Folks, if you're here today and, and, and you have a hard time getting self out of the way, pray that the Lord change you. I have a hard time getting self out of the way. And folks, I'm not just talking about here at church. You know, we, we, we've discussed these things that we've looked at, and, and, and we're talking about these in the context of the church, in the context of maybe even a church setting. But how does the church change? By each and every one of us individually. Mm -hmm. Take it home with you. Bring it with your spouse. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you got a spouse, do it this way. There. When you go out, maybe you go to Walmart. Live this way there. With your friends, live this way there. If you can do it in the world, <coughs> you ought to be able to do it here with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So let there be unity in the church. Let's be unified. You know, the uh, uh, only way, we've talked about it, the only way that the body of Christ can work properly is to be all here, all together, all the time. How are we going to do it if half the body wants to go one way and half the body wants to go the other way? We've got to be in one mind. You know, uh, I'm not the most graceful person, but if both of my feet decided they want to go down at the same time right now, I'd probably be on the ground. Okay? So look here. My right one goes, and my left one goes. And it works together. You know, uh, that, 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 that's how the church body works. My brain had one idea, and it executed. Let's do that in the church. Let's have one goal. What's that goal? To reach lost souls with the message of Jesus Christ at all costs. You know how we're going to do it the most effective way? We'll be unified. Let's get self out of the way. Let's worry about the Lord and doing His will here in this place. Let's all stand. <clears throat> Ready for a verse of invitation?